Hello everyone, it's Magda the Story Spider. I've been working on something kind of special this winter, definitely different than what I'm used to. You guys you usually hear me do the fairy tales and folklore and that kind of thing, but right now I'm exploring personal narratives. So the stories I'm working on right now are a little bit closer to home, a little bit closer to the heart. This story was inspired by a theme uh, given to me by Jamie Anderson. So, thank you. My family has a little bit of issue with being on time. My father guarantees that any one of his children are going to be at least 15 minutes late, no matter what. And we risk giving him a second heart attack if we show up on time or even, heaven forbid, early. So, it really shouldn't surprise him that much. I mean, we've been doing this for four generations. My grandmother was born in 1900, turn of the 20th century. But it took her siblings 12 years to show up. She carried on the tradition with her, her kids. I mean, my uncle was born in the prime of her 20s, and then my father, again, took 12 years to show up in 1936. In turn, he carried it on. Let me explain. I'm the youngest of four children, but I was raised an only child. The story goes that my mother was studying for her master's in education. She had three kids in high school. What could go wrong? Sunday was designated to be study day. And so every week, my parents would sequester themselves in their bedroom. After church, my siblings were given snacks and friends and death threats if they touched that bedroom door for anything less than the house is burning down catastrophe. I was obviously a study break. When my parents told my siblings what was going to happen, well, my brother didn't believe them. I mean, he had already had to suffer through two other little sisters. Why would he get a third? But when they finally convinced him otherwise, he refused to call me anything but she and her. So convinced he was that I would be another girl. My older sister loved to babysit, except she kept being mistaken for my mother. My younger sister, who is actually 13 years older than I am, um, was my childhood idol. But I really don't want to repeat her childbearing path. Granted, um, there's only about five years difference between Kathy's kids. But the last one came in like fall crop. Completely a surprise and full of flavor. And when she, like my mother and my grandmother, was close to her 40th birthday. Kathy had decided that two children were plenty for their, uh, their household. One boy, one girl, she was done. She went to her doctor, scheduled a hysterectomy. Now, doctors these days have this really cool thing where they call you about a week before uh, to announce impending events and whatever doom you have to prepare yourself for. Kathy didn't get one of those phone calls. She thought that was a little odd, but she let it go a few days. And she took the initiative because she still hadn't heard anything. She called the number, and it rang and rang. No message, no machine telling her to do otherwise. So she checked the number on her business card and rang it again. Nothing. No response, no answer. This was getting weird. So on her next errands day, she went into town and dropped by the office. The windows were boarded up. The door was locked, and all signage had been removed. There was no sign of life at all, whether it be a doctor, staff, nobody. Obviously, they had neglected to tell any of their clients that they were going out of business. Yeah. Well, we are not a type of people to get certain professionals out of the yellow pages or just off of Google. We take recommendations, we check references, and these things take time. So it took months for Kathy to find a new OBGYN. And 
And of course, then it took weeks for her to make an appointment. And then finally, she was sitting down, finishing her paperwork. Then she went in for her checkup and she got to sit down with the doctor and ask the pertinent question of when she could schedule a hysterectomy. Well, I'm sure we can put that off for another eight or nine months. One of her eyebrows shot up in the air. I'm sure you want to wait until after the baby is born. Two eyebrows shot up in the air. You didn't know you were pregnant? No, she didn't. <sighs> when I asked her about it, she laughed. And she said, if her son, my nephew, was so determined and so stubborn to get into this world somehow, some way, then how could she argue? Good point. And I think that has to do with the rest of us. We have this stubborn streak, this mule headedness, but you know what? You shouldn't worry about us. Don't have another heart attack. We're going to make it. We've got plenty of time. We just might be running a little late. Thank you.